America and in Australia, and they have one right here. That whole bunch, the parties with the singing and the flute and the chanting, those are espas or sabbaths or I mean, whatever they're excited, called. I don't get excited, huh? Read what they do, guys. They use blood in their rituals, and the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. What just happened? Oh, are we go. on? Yes. Oh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it, he did a weird thing with the screen. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's episode six, right? I, I think. So. I think so. Yes. Uh, hi, it's episode six. So we tried doing this episode last week, and the internet in the French Quarter went down right when we started. So tonight's episode is going to be about covens, and we were really excited about this this week. I think that there's somebody, some force out there that doesn't want us to do it, so we're going to make it very spectacular. Um, we may be having problems on Facebook because the platform that we're using is apparently having Facebook issues. Uh, mm -hmm. So we don't know uh, yet if it's, it's if it's streaming on Facebook. It is should be working on YouTube. Uh, Calvin's saying hello. I don't know if he's yes, watching. Yes, we from see a couple people in the comments. YouTube. Calvin. Actually, we do have some people watching from Facebook. Yep. Andrea, so Brian. Maybe it's actually working just fine on Facebook. Perfect. All right. They were having difficulties, and we got a message, so we weren't sure if it was going. We we're like again, uh, but we are on. So hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Brian Kane, and this is my co-host Levi Rowland. Um, uh, we're going to start with the card for the week. Yes. Oh, actually, we're going to start with the. Uh, Wine. Well, naturally. Yes. Covered in the show with I need two it. slightly it. inebriated, very fake gentlemen talk to you about the occult. Blessed be. Blessed be. So my show and tell today is the same thing as the deck we're going to be using. I brought a very weird deck. It's called the Mantania, is what you usually buy it as. It's not a tarot deck, but it's sold as one. Um, it's actually a weird deck that was created in Renaissance Italy to teach rich young girls sort of Christian virtue, right? So it's got the seven planets, it's got um, the three Christian virtues, the, it's got a lot of gods in it, but it's used as a sort of like introduction to classical mythology and sort of Western um, morals. Good cut. Little knocks, important. The faces on this are kind of creepy. Aren't they? Everything's creepy back then, very Catholic. So the card for today, and it's a card that actually does appear in traditional tarot too, is Justice. They're gilded cards, and they're um, gilded in a silver way. They're very pretty. Um, but Justice, so balance. This is a good order. week, then. Legality. <laughs> I know, right? Yes. It's a good week to, like, you know, sue your neighbors. Balance. Do something illegal. You get away with Defend it. Defend the, the righteous. Defend the righteous. Very Old Testament. Defender of the faith. Defender of the faith, defensive free day. So, uh, apologize for recreating last week for those of you who started um, started at the beginning of last week when we had to go under. And I even wore the same shirt because I'm not I'm not wasting the shirt because it's first debut. Uh, but I shared uh, a ring that I uh, received from Christian on uh, winter solstice a couple of years ago. Um, it is a coin that was commissioned by Ptolemy Soter of Alexandria, Egypt, after the death of Alexander the Great. He was one of Alexander the Great's friends and generals who ended up uh, inheriting that part of the empire eventually and became the next pharaoh after Alexander the Great and began the Ptolemy dynasty that would end with Cleopatra. Um, he does have ram horns on it uh, from his title Du Carnain, which means two-horned, Two Hornet Alexander, Dar Kane, Dar Duke Kane is probably how they would have said it. Yeah. Uh, and that even is even recorded in the Quran, honestly. Yeah, he's the two horned enough. one in the Quran, uh, yeah. But uh, the story behind this ring is when Chris and I were first uh, dating, living, we were living with each other. So we were Our first vacation, we. Um, we went to St. John's Island in the Virgin Islands, and there was a, an occult bookstore, and um, or not occult bookstore, we're doing a, a jewelry store, and it was very yuppie-ish, you know, high-end sort of thing. I mean, this place was started by the Rockefellers, if it gives you any kind of idea. Uh, just you know. So there was a, there was a ring just like this in there, and I, you know, I didn't ask for Christian buy it for me or anything like that because it was like three thousand dollars and. I don't know. I just wasn't there yet, you know. Uh, so I basically, I was still pretending. Uh, <laughs> I'm still strategizing. You're um, I'm teasing. 
Uh, anyway, so I mentioned I did love the ring to him, though, and, and he said, oh, I don't know if I'd want to attach myself to that energy. You know, He died at a very young age. I said, oh, after conquering the whole world. Golf. Um, so, interesting, and years later, Christian did get this for me, and he actually added the Macedonian uh, royal star on the sides, which I thought was very cool because it's an eight-pointed star. Uh, love it. It's one of my favorite rings. Anyway, that's my show and tell. For nice. Time. So why don't we start with the blurb about what today's show is going to be yep. from your perspective. So today we're talking about covens, you know, all of the things that you want to look out for. Should you join one? Is it just about the group sex? What are the mechanics of the group sex? I, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I get everything I want. At night, all cats are gray. Um, no, all joking aside, covens, because most people I think who are watching are probably not in one. I think we have most people who engage with the occult or magical world start out with or spend most of their magical life with solitaries. And... What does it mean to like decide that you don't want to be that anymore? That you want to be in a coven? And what? Why? Why would we do that? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is a very important subject to me uh, because I absolutely am someone who practices coven witchcraft. Uh, I have been solitaire uh, a few times in my life when I first started out. Uh, a couple times when I've moved to locations where I couldn't be with my coven. When I first came to New Orleans and I wasn't in a coven. So there have been times, and I do have my own solitary work and practices. Most coven witches do have their own solitary work and practices. You know, we don't just reserve our work for, for the coven. However, that's the heartbeat of what we do. And it is the center of religious witchcraft. So we're going to explore that in depth today, what it means... Uh, what it can do for you, the different kinds of covens, answer any questions about our coven or what we know yeah. about covens, uh, the history a little bit, all of those sorts of things. So I'm very excited about that. Yes. Um, yeah. I've been in covens now for probably somewhere around... Oh God, I don't want to date myself. Uh, somewhere between... She's young. Somewhere I'm around 30 years I've been practicing in covens of some sort or another. Uh, you know, I've been in three different covens, sort of, but we'll talk about that maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, now, uh, we've got lots of questions. Yes, we do. Uh, so I wanted to say, obviously, your questions are the priority. If you don't have any, Levi and I will ask us. Like, apparently, we can't take phone callers right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. I'm not Just the technical person. A lot person. of technical things. Uh, so apologize for that. We will be able to do it in the future. Um, so any questions, go ahead and type it in the chat. Levi's monitoring. Mm -hmm. We'll scroll back. We'll yep. get to those questions. Um, so did we have any yeah. questions? Big shout out to everyone saying hello. People, Somebody said from the Great Smoky Mountains, which is funny. It's where I'm from. I'm Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And uh, also from Lexington, Kentucky, which is my whole family on the other side. It's from Johnson County, Kentucky. So it's real close to home tonight for some reason. All the way from India, Corpus Christi. Hello. We see all your comments. So nice to see you all. Welcome. A couple questions that did come up. One was um, early, which was from Sherry, which was, I think it was from Sherry, um, which was uh, about shuffling the tarot deck. Um, I don't have a specific amount of times that I do it to answer your question. Um, whatever feels right. right. I started knocking on mine I do knock on years mine ago. I don't really know how it began. <laughs> it's like little traditions like that are fun. You know, if you're a diviner or a fortune teller of any kind, you know, you pick up your own sort of trad traditions. And then the big one that we started with is, I was told to check out a coven, and this is some other people's question too, it basically, or somebody said, you need to be in a coven or whatever. Where do you start? Like, where do you even begin? Well, here's the first thing I would tell you. Uh, if somebody has to tell you to check out a coven, it's not the right time. Not unless you ask them, hey, I'm interested in covens, and they said, go check out this one. I think it would be good. Yeah. But if someone approaches you and says, you need to join a coven, or you should come see this coven, or you should come visit my coven, uh, that's a that's a big red flag uh, to begin with. You know, um, coven is a... Uh, let's start a little bit with the history about it. Um, the word coven is very obscure. You know, uh, most people would say it probably started up around... Uh, the church's idea in the medieval mythology about witchcraft and was pop popularized by, you know, Reginald Scott and Margaret Murray and people who are really digging into witch trials. Uh, I don't quite buy that, but you'll find that's quite often true of me. Um, sorry, I always look at the... I'm looking at myself, not you. Um, change. There are lots of words and interesting... Uh, details as to where that may have started. You know, we've got churches, uh, we've got this idea that church also had a thing, you might be able to correct me on this because my memory is not quite catching it, 
I think it was a coventicle or something like that. And it was a word the church used if Christians gathered in worship and it was unsanctioned. So it was considered blasphemous. If you, in other words, if you were, uh, you know, the beginning of the Protestant movement or whatever, and people were gathering in homes to pray yeah. without the priest, they called it a coventicle or something. I can't like remember. That. Something similar to that. Yeah. I got the word off, uh, which I shouldn't because it's actually in my book. But uh, I, you know, it came to my mind. Uh, the history of the word being used as a gathering for religious uh, reasons is actually a bit widespread. You know, we have convent. You know, uh, covenant. Covenant. You know, there's That's all these different words. Uh, coven can also be found in uh, in a goddess, uh, Coventina, who was a Romanized Celtic goddess who they think might have been connected to Sullis because she is in Bath. She's found in Bath. She's also found at Hadrian's Wall, um, a, a three-formed sort of nymph goddess. Of course, we don't have any mythology around her, but interesting that you've got this pre-Christian goddess in Britain named Coventina. Uh, also, there was a Celtic chariot that had the word coven in it. Uh, actually, I can't quite remember how to say it right now, but Boudicca, her chariot, was mm-hmm. one of these. So the word actually... Oh, that doesn't quite sound like... You know, mass murder. And, you know, uh, you but, know uh, fine. The point is, we Those don't quite know we, how we got to the final product of coven or coven, you know, because actually both are correct pronunciations. Uh, but it is the uh, name that we use for witches gathering, and historically in the West, uh, with, within church uh, mythology, medieval mythology, and the modern pagan witchcraft movement, it is the word we use for a gathering, uh, a formal gathering of witches. Yeah. Outside of the Sabbath. Yeah. Any other questions? I think it's, um, yeah. I think it comes from uh, strong, the most strongest from covenant. I was just going to say, what's your. Yeah, take I think on it the comes history? the strongest from the word covenant. I think if you read the original sort of. Um, some of the best, and we're going to do a whole show, I think, on witch mythology, so I won't go too next, into this. Next week. Yeah, next week we're going to talk about the witch mythos in the, in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance and stuff like that. But I think the word coven most likely comes from the belief that Christians thought that we had a covenant with the devil instead of a covenant with the church. Or, right. once again, an unsanctioned yeah. gathering. Yeah, an unsanctioned gathering, uh, which was a false have, covenant. They wouldn't have called it the same thing they were calling false Christians, though. So yeah. It could have come from that. You but know, they did, you, for example, yeah. you do see in, in the, um, the, can, the Episcopal canons, which were the writings of bishops at the time that were used by priests a lot for terms of confession, that people were covenanted or made a covenant. They used the Latin, obviously, uh, with... Um, the devil, right, or with the false god or whatever, the Dea Paganorum, the goddess of the pagans, which is Diana in most cases. So I do think that's where it comes from. But the, to the question, which was very much like, where do you start? Um, that's a hard one to answer because a lot of covens, some covens are really public, we are, but most aren't. And so it used to be that everybody used Witch Fox, which is a very 90s website nowadays, right? It's like still got that aesthetic. You still can find... Is that how you found me? It is. And you still find covens there. It's where I found mine. Um, it's a. It seems outdated, but for some reason it has stuck and stuck and stuck. Because um, nothing's come along to replace. Exactly. It. I've really thought there. about replacing it myself, but I've got too many projects going. Yeah, on. it's like it's hard to replace. Um, and I would say also, witchcraft shops are often a good place to begin. The first thing you have to decide is what kind of coven you want to join. You know, there's really two kinds of covens. There's what I'd call an ad hoc coven. Uh, which is a gathering of people who want to work witchcraft together, uh, not necessarily in any formal way. Uh, This would describe the first coven that I was involved in, which was a a group of young teenagers, really, who were gathering together, you know, to practice witchcraft, and we didn't know what the hell we were doing, but we all wanted to do it together. these are not, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you're in a small town or you're somewhere and you, you, know, you don't have any formal training and that's all you have, it's perfectly okay. Unfortunately, a lot of people try to pass these sorts of covens off as something other than they, than they are. That's where we get problematic about it. And then you have lineaged covens. You have covens that come from traditions that have initiation, which is how this entered into the modern world. You know, Gardinarian and Alexandrian witchcraft are under the umbrella of coven witchcraft. We practice in covens, and we were the first traditions, period, and the first traditions to really be practicing in coven. Uh, there were, you know, other people. You had Cochrane's group, and you had uh, the Coven of Atho, which I think actually both came after Gardner witchcraft myself. But these were just one-offs, 
they were ad hoc covens. They didn't have a lineage. They didn't pass on a lineage. You know, that's a different subject. And uh, that's what I meant earlier by sometimes you'll get these covens who will be like, oh, yes, but we're actually from blah, 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 blah. Very, very ancient. So like you have to decide what it is you want. Are you wanting to get initiated into a tradition, a formal coven? And if so, what kind? Uh, so there's that. Or are you just looking for people to, to be around with? And uh, are you looking for training? Are you looking for, you know, fellowship? Like, what are, yeah, what, that, what that term is for? super important that you just used. Yeah. Um, there is a difference between a coven that is going to act as a training organization that is going to be religious in nature, that is going to challenge you and is going to train you a specific in a specific set of traditional um, ways with specific tools and whatnot versus what is basically a um, just a group of people who have gathered in fellowship. If you are all individuals who practice a solitary path, but for the Sabbath want to get to, for the, the eight traditional Sabbaths want to get together and have a celebration, that's something very different than a Gardnerian or Alexandrian coven, which is a religion and a priesthood. So joining that is a whole different journey. It's very similar to joining something like the OTO or Haitian Voodoo or whatever. It's a committed organization that's going to have its own system, its own tradition, its own culture. Um, expectations are a little tighter. You know, somebody in the comments, for example, said, I don't like labels. They really feel me very, um, uh, you know, they, they feel very restrictive. Well, they are in a sense because you are putting, they're not restrictive in a bad way, though. In my opinion, they restrict in a good way. They restrict in a way where you have guidance, where they give you a path, you know, eclectic Eclectic work is not I think bad. We have a troll. I know, right? <laughs> a funny one. A funny okay. one, but uh, no, eclectic is not bad. But um, we're eclectic. We're a scavenger religion. We take what works, but within a framework, and that framework gives you guidance and it hones the mind in a way that I think is a little bit different than solitary work. Absolutely. Uh, so we did have one from Carrie. Uh, Carrie, are Alexandrian covens considered Wicca? Uh, sort of a different subject. Uh, Wicca, to, to us, is just an old word for witch. So, in fact, Wicca would be pronounced Wicca, originally, yep. and it means a male witch uh, in Old English. It's an Old English word, which is Anglo-Saxon, and you must re realize this is not Germanic, this is not Saxon. A lot of people get confused and they think that we're using that in the Saxon context. We're not. It's Anglo-Saxon, which is the same thing Later. as Old English. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's a thing. Germanic language, but it's not German. Correct. It's, it's, the, it's the root for our English language. Mm -hmm. English. A Germanic England, language. England. England. So, uh, yes, uh, Alexandrians are witches, and we have used the Old English word uh, in our craft. Uh, it's not my preference to use that, because unfortunately... Um, Speaking of labels, uh, we may not like them, but they're all around us, and without them, you cannot communicate. Yeah. Uh, so, unfortunately, you know, two percent milk needs to be two percent milk. It just is what it is. You know, might not like. You know, why can't we just all call it milk? Well, because there's different kinds of milk. Uh, so Especially nowadays, damn. Uh, you know, almond milk. Yeah, yeah acidophilus milk. Uh, Extra weird fat, milk. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, labels are just part of reality. You might not like them, and it's probably because they overused. But the situation is a cat and a feline are essentially the same thing. The word Wicca is, has been used, especially in the 80s and the 90s, uh, simultaneously with people practicing uh, umbrella paganism. Uh, neo-paganism. You know, they, it's yeah. been used simultaneously. So because of the Scott Cunningham generation, I guess we could call it, uh, the pagan movements, all of the, you know, pagan pride movements across the universe, uh, people, you know, they'd read these books and they'd say their religion was Wicca and it has absolutely, or use the word Wiccan, which you'll yeah. find we initiates don't use Wiccan very often. I find it to be uh, in Britain that there's not a problem, you know, you can use Wicca, you can use witch, you can, you know, whatever. Uh, a lot of the people I know there prefer initiate now, because it's all become so bollocks, Levi. It's just overused. Uh, you know, uh, and I prefer initiate as well, because no one can really argue with me about that. It's like, uh, well, not an initiate, or you are an initiate, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, yes, uh, Alexandrian witchcraft can fall under the umbrella of the Wicca, but uh, to us, it means exactly the same thing as witch. 
Yeah. So, and, and originally, uh, Gardner and Alex and that movement used witch and witchcraft to describe ourselves. We didn't use it. It's a very modern American thought process to divide witchcraft from Wicca. Wicca, yeah. And that's all about sensitivity. You know, this is the thing I do hate about labels. You know, uh, there's lots of people who are calling themselves witches, so you should call yourself something else. Uh, go to hell. You know, we were using it first. So, you know, you can call yourself whatever you want. Don't try to put us in a box that we created in the first place. But that's a big thing. It's like the big thing you see online constantly is witchcraft is a practice, Wicca is a religion. We don't believe that. They're the same thing. Like witch, witch, witcha, Wicca. So, yeah. Same thing. Uh, like, yes, the answer is yes, but it's not our primary yeah. title. And we just You'll like find that. it with a lot of people because it became it's a label. You know, the things that came from Gerald Gardner were Wicca, and the things that were older, spookier, or whatever. We're, we're not. Well, yeah, no. We've been doing all of that long before any of that sort of narrative. No, and that so. entire narrative of witchcraft as a practice, Wicca is this new religion that popped up. That's odd considering Gerald Gardner's first book was called, well, not first book, but first book about this entire religion was called Witchcraft Today, not Wicca Today. Um, Doreen Belliente's book was called The Rebirth of Witchcraft, not The Rebirth of Wicca. So, like, this idea that all of our elders use the word Wicca and therefore witchcraft we need to call tomorrow. ourselves that, it's not true. What witches do. What witches do. The witches a, way, a eight witches Sabbaths Bible. for witches. You know, uh, every single frickin' book. A very modern idea to try to put us in that box. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a false It's history. actually very sad to me that some initiates actually promote that idea. And I know why they do, because they're trying to claim something for their own to say this is how we're separate, you know, which you also get the whole 1C thing. Yeah. But, you know, reality situation is, this is my philosophy. I'm going to do what we've always done. I don't care what other people are doing or saying. Yeah, that's it is who we are. That's just what it is. So, so another specific question from the light of Diana. Um, uh, in a formal coven, is she's asking about the traditional 13-member rule. Um, how does that work considering Alex and Gardnerian authors state that there should be equal male and female members? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, that's just a, that's a little bit of a, well, that's a little bit of a dream. So yeah. the only actual rule is that uh, in those covens, you could meet with 12 women and one man. Mm -hmm. You could meet with 12 men and one woman. What you can't meet with is a group that doesn't have both sexes in it. In other words, if our coven, if all of a sudden one night the priestesses all didn't show up, we would not perform the rituals. Yep. We have to have at least one priestess or one priest. Ideally speaking, uh, yes, it's a, it, a lot of covens like the balance of, of trying to have that. I think that this is also a preference. Uh, it wasn't really an early thing. It was something that certain lineages did because they liked the idea of having established heterosexual couples together. You know, uh, And uh, it's not the Alexandrian way, and it's limited in the Gardnerian way. I do know lineages who do do this but it's yeah. actually not universal. Uh, Gerald Gardner started his first coven by himself. You know, he was, he was the one to initiate the priestess, mm -hmm. and vice versa, so did Alex. Uh, this is not a... It's not really necessary. Ideally speaking, we love balance. We're a polarity, fertility cult. Absolutely. So we try to have equal... Even in my coven, we try to... But the universe is going to bring who it's going to bring in. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not... Because I, I run a uh, training coven, uh, and I do not, uh, we don't have working partners outside of myself and the high priestess. Um, we trade off, you know, the women work with different men, the men work with different women. Uh, me and the high priestess work with different people uh, because we want, to, we want them to get the variety. We don't file everyone up and stick them with one individual and say, no. this is your working partner. Uh, Very rigid. That's something that really is done to train people how to, or was done or is done with some groups, to train people how to work with the opposite sex because that is essential to some of our magics. Yeah, the yeah. polarity tradition is central. So as to the rule, I would say it's not really a rule. The it's rule, not a rule, yeah. it's, a, it's a way. Yeah. Uh, but people are going to come, they're going to come. If you're a high priestess and you have a maiden and then you get seven initiates in a row who are all priests, and they're good, 
Yeah. You're not going to turn them away because you can only have two priests. It's no. It's ridiculous. Yeah. No. Uh, the gods call him, they call. So one of the questions a little bit further back was... Let me find it again. I think our coven is fairly equal to them. I think it is, actually. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I think it does Depending on who shows. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So mm. somebody asked, it's Russell, how would you recommend vouching a coven that is not from an established tradition? If it's not from an established tradition, it doesn't really require a vouch. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, here's something I will tell you. There are lots of traditions out there, and there are lots of covens out there who claim Gardnerian or Alexandrian lineage, but they're not doing that. They're doing something else. I'm going to tell you right now, I think that this is really a huge red flag. I do not see most Gardinarian or Alexandrian initiates deciding they're going to take what they've been given and run off and create a different tradition. It's a sign that they either got no training, that they were yeah. rejected on some level, or, or that they're training. lying. Nine times out of ten, it's they're lying. You know, uh, what was uh, that tradition that was here for a while that kind of died out? Which one? Was a, they claimed Alexandria Madras. The Blue Star? Yes, Blue Star. Blue Star, for instance, and I'm not bashing, I'm just giving you my own personal feedback. I know it's had its, uh, its own problems outside it has of some this. big ones, yeah. Uh, Blue Star was a, a line that claimed Alexandrian lineage. I never bought it. Uh, and the stories don't add up. You know, it's, just, it's somebody way back when in this lineage that was created. There are ad hoc covens that did based on usually lies, create some sort of lineage, you know, and that does happen, you know, but uh, a vouching process is basically you're proving that you go back to the originator of the source. So if somebody starts a new tradition and they say, Bob Johnson created this tradition, well, then you need to be able to trace that line back to Bob Johnson. If they say, you know, Mary Lisbon, created Ever. it. You need to be able to prove that it goes back to... Vouching is a process by which you're getting someone to speak for someone else. Nowadays, it's actually very easy. It's not about whether they like them or not. You know, If you come to me and you say, is this the real Alexandrian coven? I'm only going to be interested in if they have the lineage. I may not know anything about what goes on in their circles. So I can't, you know, because if I've never been in it, I can't speak to it. Yeah. Um, you know, so a vouch is, a, you know, some people have been in each other's circles. Like, oh, they're good, you know, and I'll tell you. Yeah, it used to be but, a lot uh, easier. Oh, there's, t- there's tons of initiates I don't like, and there's tons of initiates that probably don't like me. But if, they're, if they've got the lineage, then I would tell you, yes, I know they have the lineage. Yeah, you know, and be honest. I'm, I'm friends with lots of Alexandrians, and I'm friends with lots of Gardnerians, you know? And they, too, love tons of initiates and mm-hmm. don't like all initiates. That's something That's I've too. noticed amongst initiates, is even if somebody doesn't like someone or doesn't like the way they do something in they'll particular... They'll say, oh, they're real. Yeah, they'll still do that. They'll still be like, oh, they're legitimate. I may not like X, Y, or Z about them, but we don't really delegitimize somebody just because of dislikes. And I, I've noticed that amongst all of our travels, amongst well, many different kinds of in honesty, initiatives. In true honesty, there are too few of us to fall out. Exactly. Like, and we can you know, we might hate you, but well, I, don't, I don't believe I really hate any initiate. I oh, think I hate I've a been, lot of people. I, I think there are, some that I, there are some that I don't, you know, I love them and bless them very far away from me. But I don't think I, don't think I hate any initiate. No, I don't either. I don't really think I do. Not really, no. Which I can think of right now. Gonna, uh, he's going to come up with a list later. I'm going to get no. a text message. That's like, I totally forgot. Like, do you know I that knew. Ever? I haven't been around right. long enough. Like, uh. No, one of the things that um, I'm kind of touching on a couple questions here, but um, it's something I think we haven't really addressed well, which we should have in the beginning, which is why would you want to be a part of a coven? Why not just be a solitary witch your whole life? Why People are messy. People are complicated. Somebody brought up how witches have strong opinions and it's like herding cats. Why be in a coven? Um, well... If you have to ask that question for yourself, you probably don't belong in one. Uh, however, that might change. Yep. Sometimes it's about who you meet. You know, uh, Christian, for example, I hate to tell his story, but Christian had no interest in getting initiated and he had no interest in uh, joining a coven other than the, well, I shouldn't say that. He was in ad hoc covens before. Yeah. Uh, 
but he wasn't interested in being initiated. He wasn't ish- interested in being an Alexandrian or Gardnerian. And he would have picked Gardnerian over Alexandrian, I can assure you. Uh, however, by proxy, you know, and meeting certain Alexandrians and then seeing, feeling, I think psychically yeah. feeling what was going on for us for seven years, so knocking on the door, saying, oh, I think I want to get to shit. And we're like, no, no, go away, go away. Nobody's home. <laughs> Goodbye. But he got in the same way he got me to marry him. How <laughs> quaint. Even, Even the rebel. Uh, actually, he's an excellent initiate now. Uh, you know, we're very proud of him. But uh, the reality of the situation is, is that uh, you want to be a priest and you want to be yeah. trained, or you want to be a priestess and you want to be trained. If we're talking about Alexandrian Gardnerian initiates, uh, that is about join, joining a coven, much like becoming a nun would be joining a convent. You are going to we learn it, from people with lots of experience. We have better outfits. If you just want fellowship, well, that's a whole different story. You know, uh, then you need to, you know, join an ad hoc coven or go to pagan roots or yeah. join the Which nearest pagan organization. They're just different. Uh, and I know it sounds sometimes like we might be bashing them, but it's not. It's just different. I do bash them. I know you do aggressively, but like, it's not necessarily about that. It's just there's the so reason why I bash different. them is because I believe very strongly that sometimes a little pushback is required. Oh, I agree with that. And I have uh, given myself permission to be villainized by doing it a little bit. In reality, in a, in a grander sense, I don't care what anyone does. No, it's your own spirituality. Where I push back is because these people want to include me. You know, the nearest pagan pride movement considers me to be a part of them, you know, at one point. Probably not so much now, but, you know, at one point, uh, you know, you are, you know, all witches are are part of this movement. All all initiates are part of this movement too. And we're all one big thing. And that's that's my kind of pushback. So, no, I don't. I don't. No, We're not. No, that's no. here's something I will say that I think some people who are watching they may have things in common. This might clarify some things I think about a lot of the stuff we talk about on this show about Brian and I's viewpoint, which is um, Brian and my viewpoint. What's the grammar there? Um, is this? Uh, we are not a universalistic religion, and some people are. And I think some people in the pagan movement really want their religion to be a world religion. You know, they want it to be on the same level as Christianity and Buddhism and other missionary sort of religions. We don't. You know, our religion We don't want to do the missionary position. No. Much more advanced. Much more tantric. No, all joking aside, we want it to be much well, maybe, more yeah, sometimes. You know, maybe a little. It's fine. Uh, Face context important. But a little bit of mystery is what we're here for, right? You know, we want it to be a mystery religion. We want it to be hard. We want you to have to knock at the door. We want the door to be locked at first. It's not easy. If it was easy, it's not worth it. Even anything. you go back to the ancient world, you know, and you had to lose this, and people yeah. travel all over the classical world to become initiated there. It still was a cult unto itself. You know, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't something everybody was doing. Uh, same thing with the Druids. Even though they may have had, at one point in time, great influence over the tribes of the people we would now call the Celts, uh, they were a thing unto themselves. You were yes. either initiated and trained into what they were doing, or you were not. Um, it is the same thing today. We have brought back the old gods. We have brought back the initiations through the thread of Western occultism. We have brought back, in a strange sense, the tribes. The tribes just don't like the priesthood. You know? yeah. And that's a, it's a rebellion against the Christian church, is what it is. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, they're afraid that if they acknowledged our you know, position, that they would somehow be empowering us to govern them. Uh, and they don't understand that's not our purpose. Well, it's, uh, it's this concept. So we'll of guide them from behind the scenes. <laughs> we'll be the North Star. Um, no, I agree with that. I think that it's just a lot of people's knee-jerk reaction to traditionalism is they think that it is going to be as dogmatic as Christianity, and it's not. It's just not. It's a whole different religion, you know. But the mystery religions were like this. It kind of gets on my nerves sometimes, and I think you would agree with this. When people who identify as pagan will will attack us because we're too rigid or too. Or you know, created by Droll Exactly, or created or whatever. But they're very much 
harkening back to a time period that was even more rigid. If you read what it was like to be initiated at Eleusis or the cult of Isis, my God, it was unbelievably difficult and rigid in some circumstances. So, which, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Either you want to harken back to the mystery well, religions or you don't. I also say something. I don't care how many things you've read about our initiations. It's not out there. It's not all out there. No. No, some of it is, but not all of it. You know, and that's another big thing is like people people will never ever believe that it's not all been spilled, right? I said that you know I've said that before, like yeah, fear, fear of missing of out. You know, it's all now, been spilled. Uh, what do you get out of a coven? What do I get out what of? What have you gotten out of it? What have been the challenges? What is your experience? I want to give some snarky answer here, like like again, group sex, money, but no, um, I'll be serious. I have not given you any money for sex. No, never. <laughs> Um, He's too cheap for me. How dare you? I don't even know if there's a button on here. This coven doesn't need a new Supreme. <laughs> Needs a new rug. Mm -hmm. Seems suited. I'm gonna murder him. Okay? <laughs> I'm gonna I'll give him the knife and he won't do it and I'll have to cut his throat just like Fiona did. This is dark. I don't know where <laughs> we went to a dark place. Um, uh, now, what did I get out of a coven? Um, seriousness. Training. Um, I... I, everybody I meet. Better easy. clothing. Yeah, that's how, how being beautiful. <laughs> Having a boyfriend. So shallow. <laughs> um, no, uh, everybody I, I meet team. who is uh, solitary, I get a lot of this. I'm taking it serious now, and then I've dedicated myself to this God, and that lasts about a week, and then and then it's something new, and then it's I had a visualization or a revelation. Now it's this, you know. Okay, and that lasted about a week, and nothing ever really sticks. And I'm not really trying to be mean here, but it's just this recurring, endless spiral. And I didn't want to be a part of that. Like, it, there's no growth there. And you they didn't like bubble ones. I no, I didn't I exactly. Strangely it's just, enough, it's just not. This is actually a very funny story. If I don't mind sharing it. Oh God. Uh, Levi did reach out to me on which box. He's one of the two coven members who. Did, who actually yeah. met me through Witchbox. Um, and I don't get a lot of traffic there, so it's actually quite amazing. I think the entire time I've been on Witchbox, I've probably got in contact with like 10 times. And it's usually crazy people with weird letters about how they're you know, hereditary witches. I'm like, well, then why are you contacting me? Go hereditary. Call your grandma. If you're hereditary, why do you need to talk to me about it? Yeah, where's um, Nana? She's doing great. I can't help you. Um, we met for our first meeting at a coffee shop. And it was on me, Easter. him, and one of our priestesses. And it was Easter Sunday, and none of us knew. We didn't know it was Easter Sunday. That's how much of a heathen yeah. group we are. We're, We're like, why bad. is there no one out? We don't know. Yeah. But no, that was funny. It was funny because we met on Easter. But that's why I get out of, that's what I get out of it. It's an actual system. You know, it's, This Easter, I was getting drunk in the French Quarter like a real New Orleans. How it, in, it's in, <laughs> in, in defiance of God's will. Watching the parade. Well, we do. It's like, watch the parade, get drunk, happy Jesus day. It's true. Everything in New Orleans is an excuse to drink, like, in it's public, true. aggressively. Don't know why Christian moved here. Um, I know. Uh, Maybe but, I thought he had a better chance of drunk people. I don't know. Maybe. You know what? They buy stuff. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I feel like I get a very, um, I get a much more serious approach to faith, tradition, power, training from a coven than I would if I was just solitary. You have to be a hell of an autodidact. You have to be a hell of a disciplined person to make this work on your own, to make anything work on your own. You just do. And most people, I don't think, have that. They think they do. They say they do. But the proof is in the pudding. You know, Jesus said something I really like, a broken clock right once, you know, right a couple of times a day. I to Jesus. He, no, did he didn't say anything to me. He's fine. But Jesus said something, you know, when he says, or actually I think it's St. Paul, you know, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, he was a bastard. Yeah, true. But by your fruits you shall know them. Like, show me what you've accomplished. You know, if all you're going to do is talk all day about, like, you saw this and then this, and then your life just falls apart over and over and over again, and there's no training and there's no point to any of it. Why are you doing this? It's just a label. You just want to, like, show up to the moot and drink mead and get drunk. Well, yeah. you know, there's a counterculture to the word witchcraft. Yeah. And there's a counterculture to the word pagan, and there's a counterculture to all of these words. And people, you know, especially online, it's really great to get on there and talk to people, or sometimes not so great. Uh, and it's a way to feel included. And that's a whole thing that's going on today, included and exclusive. Covens, to me, were just, you know, in my journey... To become a witch, my journey to explore witchcraft, uh, I never questioned that there was, I mean, solitary didn't enter into my mind. Mm -mm. It was just always witches were in covens. And I wanted to explore the authenticity of what could be, what was, 
I suppose I'm still that way on some level. I wanted the authentic. I wanted the most authentic form of witchcraft that I could possibly, you know, obtain. And now we're talking about a 15-year-old Brian at the time. So, so just a few years um, ago. Just a few. Uh, but, I mean, I think that's always been my quest. And I think, obviously, now, you know, then I was still able to embrace the fantasy on some level, you know. Whereas now I'm, you know, educated and I understand. But that education, I think there's this point, you might agree. You start out with the, some people, start out with a sort of fantasy. And then they get educated to a certain degree and it shatters their fantasy. Yeah. And they don't push beyond that. But then if you really educate yourself, it's actually quite revealing. Agreed. And you're re-inspired. This will come up a lot in our witch mythos yes. conversation. And my book as well. Yeah. Uh, because the more and more I uh, study the cults of the classic world, I'm like, a lot in common with what the church yeah. was talking about. A uh, lot in common. A lot in common. But so. I do think that there is a point where you have this idea, right, of witchcraft as a coven, and it's the mythos of the witch and whatever, and then you read things that sort of shatter that historically. But, and some people, like Brian said, end there. And then other people see beyond I that. think as a movement that's happened. Agreed. I think a lot of people got, you know, you have this whole thing saying, oh, it's all made up, or this is made up. Or, uh, there are so many authors out there who say that the equinoxes and the solstices were not originally in Britain. They were brought by the Vikings. Some people say that, yeah. A lot of authors. Mm -hmm. uh, Stonehenge predates the Druids. And it yeah, we has the, the solstice alignment one. there. Uh, it's just it's just not true, you know. Uh, we I don't know. know the whole story of what they were doing, obviously, but there's a lot of fake history out there, you know. There is. And a lot of people in the in our countercultures really embrace that with such a huge narrative. Take the word warlock for answer. Uh, I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but uh, probably better for next week's topic. But there's just a lot of misinformation. So when it comes to covens. Um, I think what is most important there is that we are talking about private gatherings, right? Mm -hmm. And it belongs only to those people. It is exclusive. Yeah. Regardless of whether you are from a lineage tradition or whether you've created that coven as a group of people, what happens there is between those individuals and the gods that either do or do not show up. So I think it is a very private affair, and that's why we'd have a coven. For me, uh, it's a huge power battery, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this for our coven here in New Orleans. Everyone brings their best game, and mm -hmm. they want everyone to succeed in life because they understand that supporting everyone and everyone's desires in that group creates this sort of thought form of success, this sort of thought yeah, form of power, for all you those know, to and, right. and we don't want, we don't want anyone to fail, because if we've got failure in that soup, it, it catches you know, that one, that one rotten apple. So, yeah, it's like disease. Uh, yeah. There is a, there is a, a group consciousness with any group, and when you get into traditions, there's a group consciousness that draws upon the consciousness of the tradition, or when you're talking about initiatory witchcraft, the consciousness of a lineage that goes back working towards a hundred years. You know, so there's this whole line of these people that came before us, and there's just a battery of power there. You know, there is something there. I don't care what kind of an individual natural witch you are. Uh, there's something there. I guess it just depends on what it is you want. You know, are you looking for fellowship? Are you looking, looking for, for training? Initiation to priesthood. To us, covens are a group. Of, they're like a coven. They're like a convent. They you know, are. They're like a monastery. It's a covenant, right? Your covenant it is together. a group of people that have come together in a sanctified way. You know, and we're training and we're working together to elevate ourselves. And okay. it eventually spreads off. So questions. you have two, two questions, and I think we on YouTube. Yes, we have two questions on YouTube. Um, and they're interesting. One of them I think we could do a little quickly, and then one of them I think might have a conversation behind it. But the one it's that I wanted saying, Don't be long to begin with, maybe, girl. Uh, the one we, we, I wanted to begin with was one of Carrie. She said, uh, do you pay dues in a coven? No. Nope. Not in ours. No. Uh, we do have a uh, what's called a coven pot. I only do it in my coven out of tradition. 
uh, because most of us are rather wealthy. We don't really need it. But we do it out of tradition. So there is a there is a cauldron placed in my house somewhere, and anyone can put money in it. No one's ever asked to. And anyone can take the money out. So, you know, uh, yeah. they're supposed to, if they borrow it, uh, pay it back threefold. So if somebody goes in there and they take $100, they're supposed to eventually return $300. But it's all, at least in my group, it's all on, you know, what you call it, you know, face value. Take a penny, leave a penny. Uh, in reality, the, honor uh, system. the only time we've taken it out is to send someone running over to a nearby store for incense. Yeah, which or is charcoal. Ridiculous. Yeah. Or to give it to homeless people outside of the house. We've done that a few yeah, times. Yeah, like we don't, we don't uh, charge though. No. Yeah. So uh, no, no uh, I don't even, I, I don't even know who puts what in there, what comes in and out. But uh, ideally, if you were in a coven, um, you know, that pot could be used for supplies. It's a, it's a way of them bringing an offering. Supplies, blah, 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 blah. But no, no, we don't. Uh, no. Uh, in fact, it's actually a, a witchcraft law that we do not charge for um, anything that we do with within the craft. So, meaning within our initatory craft. So, yeah. charging dues would be akin to charging for teaching Which or teaching, do. charging for initiation or charging for being a member of a coven. It's actually forbidden. Uh, what we have is, is about an offering. People yeah. might bring flowers... Wine, blah, blah, blah. Hence why they can take out of it, because it belongs to them. It's, it's communal. Uh, it's not a big thing in my group. I don't we do think, it for tradition. For example, itself. I don't think it would be a red flag if you were looking at a traditional coven and they wanted you every now and then to contribute for candles or charcoals or consumables. No, that That's fine. should happen. Yeah, you should contribute. But money... Uh, but for training? Paying for training? No. If they're requiring dues, like you've got to pay me $50 mm -hmm. a month to be no, in this no, no. coven... That's a bad, red, big red flag. No, 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 no. No, yeah. the craft does not cost money. Things cost money. Tarot readings at a shop yeah, sure. might cost money. A but book not might training. cost money. Uh, you know, if you have a coven member come over and mow your lawn, that's going to cost money, just like it would with anyone else. You know. Yeah. But initiation, training in a coven, practicing in a coven should be absolutely free. However, you should be expected to contribute wine, flowers, food, yeah. candles, that sort of thing. Right. Should not be on the high priest and the high priestess we all enjoy those to things. pay for everything. You know, the candle yeah. sheds its light on us all. You know, the incense smoke fills all of our nostrils. So someone did ask, what advice would you give someone who is initiated into a coven and then finds out that the, uh, the lineage is not legitimate, that it's false? Move on. It's all you can do. It's, I know it's awful. but Move on. Uh, with me personally, I was initiated into a other form of witchcraft that had a, you know, had a questionable lineage in the sense that there were certain questions. <laughs> uh, you know, just big. You know, uh, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know anything about uh, certain aspects of it, and I hadn't talked to certain people. But because of that questioning, because there was a part of my brain that said, oh, I just don't know, I don't know what, I don't know the answers to these questions. I can't prove that I go back to Gardner. I can't prove I go back to Alex. I can't prove I go back to anyone besides this one woman who I don't know. So I just eventually made the decision to move on. Mm -hmm. You know, I still value uh, my time with that group uh, and the witches that I worked with that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, my first coven was a bunch of teenagers who just got together and did a, you know, we were just gathering and pretending we knew how to practice witchcraft. <laughs> we did get power, though, because we were young and virile. Yeah, you do get and, that. Uh, and we were doing it sincerely, you know, yeah. so there were actually some experiences in that group as well. So, okay. Uh, you know. Be careful. You don't end up like Nancy. Teenagers doing witchcraft. Uh, well, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you know he's murdered a couple people. Shit. You know that he's just like three or four in Spokane buried under a goddamn oil field somewhere. It made him mad not one day. Not to speak about that. We're not here to talk about that, Debbie. Um, uh, so we did have uh, one question in here that I wanted to bring up. They were talking a little bit. I might have uh, skipped it. Um, 
Sherry says no respect. What does she mean by no respect? Oh, that was a long time ago. Actually, oh, I missed it. I'm pulling up the comments on here. Sorry, you guys. There's so many comments that it's uh, hard to keep up on because we get yeah. this little screen so Levi scrolls. Yeah, and somebody was talking a little bit about vouching again because we talked oh, about it yes. before. Vouching and is important. When you do vouch, they're asking, how do you separate the wheat from the chaff? Like, how does it feel legitimate? That is a tricky question. Basically, this is my advice to everyone on vouching. Nowadays, there are so many groups on social media that are unquestionable. You know, you've got Alexandrian groups, you've got Gardnerian groups, you have my groups, you know, people that you know are somehow publicly known as being initiates. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, trust me, if there were people being that public and they weren't, you'd be hearing about it. You would. You know, because uh, the other initiates would make sure you do. Uh, so these public people are well known. You know, we all know Janet and Stuart Farr were initiated. We all know mm -hmm. Maxine's initiated. We all know the people who are running certain groups on Facebook are initiated because they've just been doing it for so long. It's, it's you know, or they've been on TV or whatever it is that make them known. Those are the people that it's, I think, most easy for the general public to go to because they, they're going to know. For instance, if you come to me for a Gardnerian vouch, I'm not Gardnerian, but I might know a few, you know, and I have done this before where I've asked them, you know, hey, there's somebody looking for a vouch. It's not my tradition, but pass it on to them. Uh, I don't want to be, don't want that to be my full-time job, everyone. Yeah. Uh, when it's Alexandria and I take it a little bit more seriously in the sense that it is my tradition and I've got a bit, I've got, you know, more contacts even. Uh, sometimes I don't know. But the point of it is, is if you're going to join a coven, they should be able to not only tell you their lineage, but they should be able to give you a vouch. And if they're shady or secretive about it, if they, oh, I can't tell you. Uh, That's a problem, right? Don't away. do it. Mm -mm. Don't do it. Uh, I'm Lineage not saying. Covens are not. Don't do that. They uh, just don't. They might have secret initiates. We have sure. secret initiates in our group. But the point of it is, for the most part, it's really, really rare that that would be a problem. And if it is a problem, they should still be able to get a vouch. So, for instance, if you've got a group that's filled with this lineage of secret initiates, they should be able to send you to someone like my group, who's not, who could say, yes, they're real. It's harder in the United States than it is in Britain because we are a really big country. Yeah, we're normal. You know, you could fit Britain in a few of our states. And so they're all very close together and they've had this history for a long time. So it's really easy for them to figure out. And they don't have as many liars because it's, it's too so hard over close. There. Yeah, they all know it's each other. It's so big over here. We have so many liars. In my own state here in Louisiana, I had a, a group pop up. Uh, in another city in Louisiana, years after we had formed our coven. And all of a sudden, they were on Witch Fox saying they were uh, the something circle. And they said they were Alexandrian. So I messaged them. And I said, oh, I didn't know there were any other Alexandrians in Louisiana. I'd love to meet you. Blah, 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 blah. You know, what's your lineage? Who do you come from? Uh, not only did they not respond, but they removed their entire posting. That's, That's a red flag. Uh, That's I've a red had flag. another woman who came to me who was in Arizona, and she said, uh, Brian, I want to be Alexander, and I'm really, really heavily considering this. woman uh, owns a, a cult store, and she's uh, pay, you know, charging people for classes, red and flag. she says she's Alexandrian. Well, not, not for classes, charging for no. classes I thought store, you were going to say initiation. I wasn't sure. Uh, but I contacted the woman, and... I didn't actually have to seek a vouch for it. I had a conversation with her, and in 10 minutes, I knew she was not an initiate. And then I just had to press the issue, which is, oh, no, I'm not. Her claim to being Alexandrian was that this woman in her upline was friends with Janet Stuart Farrar while they were writing the book Progressive Witchcraft. And she stayed in their home while they were writing the book Progressive Witchcraft, so mm -hmm. therefore she was a progressive witch, and so therefore she was Alexandrian. Yeah, it's, and when I unfolded no. to her that this was not true, she backed away very quickly. Now, mind you, she was also claiming to be Gardnerian and a member of the OTO. They claim it all. None of way. it was true. No. Uh, she backed away in the face of somebody that she knew was real asking her the questions. 
because she didn't want to be called out and lose lose her credibility and her agreed i mean world. that's people often do but that is honestly here's what we've said before on the show when people have asked like well how do i know it's real how do i find a real coven as somebody who's went through the process i can promise you when you actually start doing it it's actually easier than it sounds the real ones are pretty legitimate it's pretty easy to see who's lying unless you're completely just absolutely just vapid and can't you know figure it out it comes pretty easily you figure out quickly who's got it, who doesn't, who's not actually. But there are young people. people who could fall Which into traps. Which brings up you know. a question, actually. Oh, from right. YouTube. Somebody said, "What are your recommendations for somebody who's interested in traditional lineage initiatory craft but is too young to join a coven?" What do you mean by too young? Like well, under eighteen? As my guess, yeah. Well, if you're under eighteen, unfortunately, sorry, you're going to have to wait. Yeah. Uh, because in, uh, no initiatory coven is going to take minor. It's not going to happen. Our religion's too um, um, adult. It's, there's too many things, too many problems yeah. uh, that happen. Uh, so, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, I, would su- I would suggest that you make contacts, mm-hmm. uh, express Study. your interest, say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm 16 years old, I know I can't join, but, you know, what resources... Should I be studying? In, yeah. You know, and when I'm 18, you know, if I'm still interested, you know. Uh, I got extremely interested in initiatory witchcraft when I was 15 years old. And I actually found my first teacher when I was 17. And she refused to initiate me because I was 17. Too young, yeah. She did start fostering a friendship with me, you know, and, you know, working with me on some level because she to me for whatever reason but uh yeah no we won't you know there's no way i would ever take someone who's in fact i probably would be reticent to initiate an 18 year old yeah not Um, saying uh, i wouldn't in america it's a little different well it's not that that it's that uh it's drinking you have to well oh that as well yeah Yeah, sorry because we're not Uh, in england (laughs) like Yeah, Yeah. you drink lots of wine. So, you know, there's a whole lot of things that go into it. So I probably would prefer someone be 21. So would I. In the U.S. at least. If I was in England, if I was in France. I haven't had it happen, so... Probably I wouldn't care if I was a coven leader and I was living in England. Whatever the legal drinking age was, I wouldn't care. But um, it's also a question of maturity, too. Like, you know, again... This is a little. This is not just for fellowship. You know, a lot of ad hoc covens. We have an initiate that started when he was very young, but he was drinking age. Yeah. And uh, but it was because he was extremely mature and had spent years. You know, uh, we're talking about Austin Chappelle, everyone. (laughs) He had spent years demonstrating from his own work that this was something he was interested in. This was something he was doing, and he was exceptionally intelligent for his age doesn't mean we didn't recognize you know but uh yeah normally i don't our our group and i think most groups tend to attract people of a similar age the problem with a group that has all young people is most young yeah. people are not going to be, i mean i was in a coven like that there's power in youth yes there's lots of power but there's not fickleness yeah, there's, there's also not fickleness wisdom, and, and there's not uh, yeah. there's an arrogance that comes with. We all felt it. Yeah, and probably me more so than you. But uh, I thought I was a living god. Does that surprise any of you? No, he uh, still does. I was chosen. By I'm chosen. I was chosen. You know, we kill our uh, chosen ones in this religion. So, um, oh, I choose you. I choose you to die. <laughs> I'm going to put a crown on your head and give you a nice red necklace. Funny you say um, that. Uh, don't tell me that. <laughs> so, uh, counter question to that. What is too old for initiation? Someone asked. If we're talking about youth, what about the other end? The only requirements for initiation are that you're capable yes. to function in that group the way that group needs you to. Mm-hmm. If you have a group that hikes out into the woods at midnight, um up a steep hill uh, to a rocky uh, mountain in southern Scotland. Good choice. They're going to require you to be able to do that. And they're not going to stop their coven from doing that because somebody is enfeebled, you know. So... Brutal. That coven would probably... They're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry you've got, you know, I'm sorry you've got 
arthritis of the knees and you can't walk. So no, you can't join. They're not going to say that. They're no. just going to say, this isn't the right group for you. And it's going to be hard for you, yeah. And it's right. they're right. It's not the group for you. Uh, if you have a coven that can accommodate those sorts of things, then they're likely to take you on. Mental is the biggest thing. Is, is your mind in the right place? You know, are you capable of learning and passing on? Gerald Gardner started very late in life. And I know other initiates who are quite exceptional. I mean, Gerald Gardner was, wasn't he in his 60s when he was first initiated? I'd have to look it up again, but it's, old, I don't yeah, know, it's, very it's late 50s, early 60s. He wasn't a young man. He was not. And look what he did and how the gods used but him. But he was spry. Uh, I would initiate an older person if that person was the right person. No qualms about it. I don't care if they were 60, you know, uh, a 90-year-old, probably not. But I can never say never. No, because what if we met one who was just amazing? Because sometimes we in circles around there's us. other reasons for initiation. You know, Agreed. Sometimes. There's a spiritual yeah. component to it, too. So Case by case basis, friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's and coven thing. by coven basis. One yeah. thing I want to, since we are on, before I address anything else that's on the comments, one of the things I really want to address is do not take what people what people say about us in social media or on forums or even in books. You mean about us by initiates? By initiates, about right? Us. Not about Brian and yeah. I, but about initiates in general. That, like, for example, I see so many posts or read even in published books. Alexandrians do X. Gardnerians like, don't yeah, do Y. And I'm like, none of that's true. Uh, like, really. I've met Alexandrians. And in fact, Gardnerians actually, everywhere. even though we're very plugged in, I have had conversations with Gardnerians that were like have told me some of my assumptions were not correct for them. Yeah. You know, yeah. because what I'm going off of is my elder's knowledge or my knowledge, not necessarily every line's experiences. Yeah. And there are Gardnerian and Alexandrian lines that have evolved that are, it's not recorded in the yeah, annals no. of history yet. Agreed. And there are covens that are like... Oh, there are Gardnerians that don't bash themselves in the head all the time. They exist. We love you, Gardnerians. I do love some I, Gardnerians. I love most of them. Kissing cousins at this yeah. point. You're my friends. Especially um, if they're hot. Yeah, well, I think you just like anybody who's hot, Brian. It's true. Um, it's valid. It's true. Uh, Stephen asked a question on Facebook. Um, uh, what about covens that have leaders who take advantage of those who are less informed on the craft? You know, predatory coven leaders. Um, listen, guys, this is c sort of... This is a question that keeps coming up in different things here. And it should. And it should come up a lot. But what if they're mean? What if it's not true? What, then leave. Like, this yeah. is not a, this is not, you know. Dorian David Valente, Koresh. Uh, like, to, to give you a thing. Like, wow. The problem is there are, there are actually groups out there that I mean, they're use abusive this and for false reasons. In other words, there are, there are people out there who claim to be a coven of witches or whatever, and their agenda is... You know, they might claim to be Gardnerian and Alexander, and they might claim to be something else, and their agenda is something else. That does exist, Drugs, just like it does sex. in Christianity, like not the Buddhism, fun Hinduism. There are, you know, there are Hindu gurus out there who are not actually Hindu gurus, who are just trying there's to get a lot money of them actually. get laid. So, you know, it is what it Buddhism, is. Yeah. Uh, there's corruption in humanity, and they will use any angle they can if sure. they're corrupt. The Kabbalah you know? Center. Of as far as real priesthood, uh, not as often. Uh, what was the question? I lost my space. People who have coven leaders who are abusive, who are taking advantage of people who do not know things about craft. Uh, well, I think usually in the traditions, that's not as big of a problem. Because there are, are people who will call them out. You know, yeah. If all of a sudden tomorrow I started saying, all of my male coven members must be my lovers and bring me gold, somebody would come out, somebody... With a big name, probably, or my own teacher, yeah. and say he's messed up. Don't you know? Yep. He's, he's gone off his rocker. Uh, the point is, somebody would call me out. I wouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, vice versa. I mean, I've done it. I've done it myself. I've never done it. I've never had to do it with an initiate because I'm new in a sense in the grand scheme of things. Even though I'm not a new high priest. In the modern context, in the history of this, I'm very new. So I haven't had the experience where I've had to like go against mm -hmm. another high priesthood member that I've known or whatever. But we would. 
if it was if it was that you know, necessary. I have to cut in here because this is so interesting. This goes right to the core of what we're talking about, which is why being a coven, why being a lineage, why being a tradition, because it self corrects. You know, that's the thing. If you're really worried, you want to find the real lunatics. Go find those ad hoc covens where they have some woman just found it. And they'll say they're Marginary and Alexandrian. Even if they don't, even if they don't, they have absolute power. Who are they going to answer to? They made it up. They're the ones right? who actually have created most of our problems. Exactly. A tradition has a way of self-correcting. You know, there are other people. There's no pope. We have our failures, but it will self self-correct. It does, because right. there are other priests yeah. and priestesses who will pop up and be like, that's mm-hmm. not right, that mm-hmm. person's crazy, or that person's wicked or abusive. Yeah. But if it's some ad hoc tradition that just got invented, and there's nobody else around, then that person really is like a little miniature god, and who's going to yes. cross the victim? So I actually think that's more dangerous. Yeah, it is. It can be. Yeah. Uh, a tradition, if I you're think joining safer. a non-lineage coven, I think that the leadership should be more democratic. I do not think... If you're joining an initiatory coven, it's a hierarchy. Yeah, right? the, it, we're not uh, a democracy. We're not democratic at all. No. But if you're joining no. something that's not no, something broader, I think it should be... We are an empire. I find your lack like of fate's people. disturbing. Oh. Only now, at the end, do you finally understand. This is how democracy does. That's, that's what you're going to get to your third degree. It's me coming out to... Only now, in the end. You find it's getting a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. He's had some wine. <laughs> um, no, it's gonna be that scene where he's like, "Let the hate flow through you." It gives you. That's already happened. Uh, That's valid. You're not wrong. Was it me though? <laughs> <laughs> it was Jesus. Basically, yeah. Kind of. Um, kind of. I we mean, love our tradition. We've been, we've been very blessed to be like uh, our teacher, my teacher, who I guess the whole coven kind of feels like it's their teacher because well, it's my coven, mm-hmm. but well, now it's me and uh, Christine's coven. Yep. the high priestess, my my working partner. There is one working partner. Uh, you know, Val is my teacher, and Maxine Sanders is the one that hooked us up, and she's fantastic. You know, I could not. I've been in witchcraft, you know, in the broader sense for many many years, but I many, wasn't until I met her years. that I. Really, 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 really resonated with someone and thought, you know, this person for the rest of my life will be my Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Do you know what I mean by Wax that? on, close off. Yes. And yet, there is this one thing. You get one, you get one teacher and it's of the opposite sex, in a sense. You know, I, get the, I get the coven, I get the coven thing is that there's a high priest and a high priestess. But I think that a lot of times it's the, the person who finally like brings you in. I don't know. It's my my thought. Maybe that's my journey and my experience. Yeah. My teachers have always been priestesses. I've never been taught by a man. I've never had a I actually never had a high priest really. You know, not really. You know, uh I'm you know, so maybe that's why I'm such a My genius. teacher's a dude. <laughs> I mean, in theory. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I'm the one who started the coven, but, you know, you've been blessed to have Val visit. Um, and I have a lot of women in my Maxine life. Maxine yeah. visit. Mm-hmm. Uh, other priestesses visit. And, you know, you've got a great high priestess. I do. A fantastic uh, one. Yep. And she could teach you more about how to poison some of the herbs than I ever could. And I got some plans, so that's I'd use battery acid. Yeah, you'd be a lot more violent. I feel it would not be gentle. Let me tell you, if somebody, if some witchy murder happens in New Orleans, and somebody like there was nightshade in the in the wine, it's not Brian. He's selling them out. It's not Brian. It's definitely not. No, if it was Brian, it's like he beat him to death with a cinder block. No, I wouldn't. I'd pay someone to do it. I mean, (laughs) I am Cersei Lannister drinking wine. Watching the whole thing the blow, up. blow up. You know that's me. I'd be like, mm-hmm. Well, she's gonna die. So. Gone to no, I Good love eye. her, but it's gonna oh. happen. Anybody who's watching GOT, we all know it's happening. I'm gonna be okay. so depressed. Uh, <sighs> covens, you know, covens. why would you want to be in one? Uh, I do believe this sort of old mythology. You know, when witches come together, regardless of what kind of witches we're talking about, they exchange knowledge. Yeah. You know, and even though I started the New Orleans Coven, and even though most of our training came down from people in the Alexandrian tradition, uh, namely Val, you know, uh, these people bring things to the coven. 
For instance, when we started exploring Kabbalah, I put Levi in charge of it. His people developed it. And they didn't. This is not a thing. His people developed it. I'm not Jewish. And I just love Kabbalah. Jewish. Well, what happened in your childhood? Uh, I'm not Jewish, I promise. I think he's reincarnated, though. I think he was a Everybody rabbi. Everybody thinks that I am because no, my first I think name. he was a rabbi in a past life. I would love that. I think it's true. Probably a rabbi he probably occultist. probably was. You're probably it's like the mad rabbi occultist. With the, with the text of the Zohar fleeing yeah, Lisbon yeah. as the city bird. I think probably. Uh, I'm so into that. Or Please let that be true. Uh, they had great names, too. Yes. I just read a great novel called The Last Kabbalist of Lisbon, which is about a Kabbalist. But I put Levi in charge of here it. For it. I didn't sit there pretending... <laughs> Thing I can't stand the most. Don't pretend you know something you do not know. Yeah. If I have a covenant member who's a first degree and they know more about an occult subject or a magic subject than I do, I'll have them teach it. I'm not going to ever pretend, and I learned this from, well, I knew it before, but I learned it from Val Ossel. You know, if I asked Val a question and she did not know, she'd say, I don't know. That's, that's the thing. That you should have a teacher that will tell you if they know everything. Oh yeah, and they everything they flag. say came from a Llewellyn publication. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, you know, uh, or if that's their whole thing is I know, I know, I know. A good teacher will be the first one to say, "I do not know." I defer to someone else. Yeah, that's good teaching. It is. And I've done it with my students. I defer to you because you knew the Kabbalah better than I did. And I know it better for doing so. Yeah. You know, and I'm a ruthless witch. So I'm the kind of witch that could take everything he knows and make something better out of it. She's gonna, I'm going to die one day. No, but it's true. No, you're right, though. You are. The, you're uh, making a rod. If you are arrogant about knowing everything, you're making a rod for your own back. Yep. You're just taking the opportunity to learn something away from yourself. Exactly. That's why I love coven witchcraft. There are things I have learned from people in this coven that I never would have known otherwise. Exactly. No matter how good of an autodidact you are, you can't read everything in the world. You can't think up everything. And it's an experience. And perspective. It's not even just about knowledge. Let's say, like, for example, there's another coven member we have who has a very sort of similar background and interest academically as I do, but her perspective on it is so different that even though we might share the similar knowledge, we do not share similar perspectives, and I've learned so much from that. So again, being around people allows you not only to see different things, but different ways of looking at things, which is how you grow. And again, if you deprive yourself of that by, I already know it, I don't need a coven, I don't need anyone, nobody can teach me anything, well, you're just screwing over yourself. I borrowed this line from someone, and I don't know who it was. Uh, or maybe I didn't. <laughs> maybe it's all in my head. <laughs> maybe it's been me the whole time. I've been drinking. There, no, there are these things sometimes where I think, where did I get that from? My best teachers have been my students. Okay. Uh, Val has been my best teacher in witchcraft. I have had other great teachers in witchcraft. But she's, I'll give her the best. Not, not to disrespect the other ones, just because I feel like she is that one. Yeah. And she taught me how to teach better than I had previously. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, my students are my best teachers. They come with their own, you know, I like to say they are all antique brass. And my only job was to polish it. It was already beautiful. It Aww. was already fantastic. Not beautiful. Yeah, but I also, the thing is, I also don't accept losers. That's okay, wow. I know. Well, so, I, mean, I guess it's a compliment, so why am I mad? If yeah. you want to know my coven criteria, I don't accept losers. I want you to be special and unique. I suppose that's intimidating for some people. Now, no pressure. Actually, I've got a better thing. There is a uh, show called uh, Versailles. Yeah. yeah. And there's a scene when the prince, not the, not the king, uh, Francis, I think, is king. I don't know. Uh, the prince, who's actually my favorite, he kind of does this drag queen thing, uh -huh. he dresses like a woman sometimes. Well, he's dating this beautiful guy with long blonde hair and mustache, and these two people knock at the door, they're having a party. And the blonde guy opens the door and he says, oh, this party is for the very rich or the very beautiful, and you are neither. And he shuts the door. So if you're very beautiful and exceptional, 
then uh, maybe. Yeah, you know, Brian uh, will make an exception. Maybe. Dumber I do than like Amber. pretty <laughs> things. <laughs> like, you uh, can be dumber than a box of hair, but there you is look one good. part God of Alexandrian witchcraft I think is, is very different than Gardnerian witchcraft. Uh, Maxine, somebody once asked her the question, I apologize for quoting you, Maxine, in case you've changed your mind, because you can change yeah. your mind. You know, and I understand that now. Just because somebody said something once doesn't make yeah, them beholden yeah. to it. But I liked this statement, so I'm, I'm, you know, I liked it. Uh, what's the difference between Gardner witchcraft and Alexander witchcraft? Beauty. Uh, we do, we do actually look at that as being a thing. Well, it's aesthetics uh, matter. Aesthetics matter. It's not just are you a beautiful person. No, you know, like. Clearly, I do accept less attractive initiates. I am. Uh huh. Clearly. Rude. Uh, hateful. Anyway, <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Uh, but beauty and ritual, beauty and spirit, beauty and personality. Well, so, if I get a person who's beautiful in a certain other way, it could be on the inside. And Brian's not actually. Day. Brian's <laughs> actually joking here. Aesthetics and beauty do matter, like a lot. That you know, the Greeks believe that it's part of the trivium in the Latin philosophy of like truth, beauty, and goodness. Oh, I and would initiate a horrible cre- creature, but only for a purpose. Everything must have a reason. <laughs> it's like the it's like the ugly hag sorceress in Beauty and the Beast. There's oh, a plan. God, yes. There's a plan. God, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. We're gonna there make are you plans beautiful. Upon plans. <laughs> no, um, but like I said, beneath all of this joking, there's a deep spiritual truth here, which Who is, is beauty and aesthetics. Exactly. Beauty and aesthetics matter. Beauty's a path to God. Look at Notre Dame. <laughs> How quaint. Even, Even the, the rabble. Um, Are there any other questions? I'm going back and forth on here. Uh, a so lot of them are, are giving us nice shout outs from different places. Love from Connecticut, Massachusetts, India, Mexico. Well, love to Very you cool. all. Here's the whole thing. We love doing this. Levi and I are having a lot of fun with it. Yes. Uh, you know, we never actually scratch the surface of what we actually no. want to talk about. No. But it's fine. It's great. You know, uh, we're very happy. The vision of this show is actually about Gardner and Alexander and Witchcraft. Yeah. Uh, we don't claim to represent Gardnerian witch. We don't claim to represent Gardnerian witchcraft. Yeah. But we believe that our religion is the same religion as Gardnerian Just witchcraft. Just different cults. We, you know. Yeah, we've gone a different way in in essence, but uh, Gardnerian is actually a broad thing on its own. You know, there's many different lineages of Gardnerian and many different philosophies within that mm-hmm. within that tree. Yeah. And we consider Alexandrian to be maybe perhaps one of the most distinct, mm-hmm. but connected to it. Not everyone agrees, but yeah, we're not trying to rep- like we're not here to represent. The Bone Line, or the Long Island Line, or no. Patricia Crowther, or or Doreen, or Gardner, but we, you know, and we're not here to represent Alex either, or Maxine. We are here to represent ourselves. But the vision of the of the is, thing is about you know the religion of witchcraft yeah, that we all practice, British witchcraft. you know, and our opinions are simply our opinions, you know, and who the hell are we? And like I said, we are. We are a niche market. We yeah. know we know who we are, right? And that is another thing that the further you get in your initiation, or the, if you're thinking about joining a coven, the further you get into it, the more you realize that that outside larger pagan world is not your world. And it's not a judgment, really. I mean, we make fun, and it is a judgment, you know, because we're being catty or whatever, but... I am never judgmental. Yes, girl, please. Um, <laughs> like, this is sir. Um, like, this, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> as I, I say, I don't know where you're going with this, but okay. I don't <laughs> like know either. <laughs> but, but we're not judging. I'm just saying the further you go in a coven, and, judge. It, and it works for you, the less that you care. Like, I don't actually feel anger or, or disappointment or whatever in any of those groups. I'm whatever. actually I'm very saying, happy. Like, when I first, yeah, like, first kind of came onto the initiatory scene, it wasn't, it wasn't well received. And, I, and I'm not going to get never. into it whole sob story because it just become cra- it opens a whole bottle of worms for a whole lot of people but the reality situation is I got to blame for the whole thing so you know uh, there was a whole lot of things that went on with that yeah and I don't here's the thing I don't QQ about it because the reality of the situation was I actually do believe in my gods I absolutely believe that they have had to hand in what's going on with me. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely believe 
for whatever reason, Alexandrian was where they wanted me. It was not my idea originally. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't gunning for one thing or another, but I probably would have went the Gaudinarian route because as I said earlier in this thing, that was the oldest, or so I So you believe, yes. Yeah. You know, uh, and it is the oldest in Britain. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, American Gardnerian witchcraft is not, well, not unfortunately, I do not believe that the Olwen lineage carried on in America is older than Alex's work. Alex's work is, you know... He's still in England. Yeah, during that time. In, in history, predates. Uh, so I think a lot of what Alex was doing is more close to British Gardnerians than American Gardnerians. And some of that but space. I'm not in an American yeah. Gardnerian coven. This is based on the lineages that I have been passed information about and people I know here. I think there's a distinction. So, you know, in some senses, I know there's a distinction. Yeah. But, you know, uh, so, but that we're all the same tree of witchcraft. This is religious, initiatory, coven witchcraft. Yeah. And know. honestly, all of the fights and whatnot that happen in it, they seem very, like, superfluous. When you actually meet initiates in the real world... Oh, I've like, actually loved most Gardnerians I've met. Me too. There's so much camaraderie. The I'm Gardnerians like, I don't like are ones I haven't met. Yeah, it's all online. And likewise, the yeah. Gardnerians who don't like me are ones I've never met. You know, it's all online mm-hmm. and whatnot. The real camaraderie that exists in Coven Witchcraft and sharing a tradition. Like, we went to, to a Sabbath... Because you know, when they meet you, or they meet yeah. another shit, they realize... We've got more in common, common than we have than not. anyone else. And you know? I mean, it was so nice when we we went to a we went to a Sabbath in, in continental Europe, and it was absolutely lovely because like you have an immediate connection to somebody, you share something, you know, and it's nice. And from different cultures and language groups and whatever, and it didn't matter. It's Maybe a, in it's the a, Grand Sabbath. Yeah, you know, it's a camaraderie. There's some people. It's lovely. Accused of being very small. Well, it was very small in the sense that there were not hundreds of people. It was very big in other ways. Yeah. And that's the very whole thing. Very big. We are not, and we keep going back to this, we're that, not that, universalists. That group was filled with icons waiting to happen. I think so too. Yeah. And seeds, powerful, fertilized seeds. It was very magical. And it brought me to a place when we were there of realizing that I don't want it. Somebody asked me at Hexfest, I was on a panel at Hexfest one time, and somebody asked, aren't you worried? You know, it's so tiny. Don't you want this to be, we're in, you know, we're in an age of expansion and freedom and democracy. Don't you want the doors flung open, the mysteries revealed? And I was like, horrified. I was like, God, you can't no. can't reveal the mysteries. No, you can't. Even if you had every secret. You can't. You can't experience them. But I don't. I want the doors I shut could, locked. It should be hard. Anyone to. could publish the Book of Shadows. Yeah. Pieces of it have been. Yeah. Anyone could publish the entire thing. They could publish the 900 and some on pages of the Long Island book. It wouldn't help you. It would not make any sense to someone who did not have the training. Uh, period. No. So somebody was asking about his shorter necklace. Um, totally random question. They oh. said it looks like a Hindu god. It's Pan. Yes, this is actually interesting you say that because it was the power that attracted your attention. This is the first piece of occult jewelry I ever owned. And it's from a very famous jewelry artist who's known in the older pagan communities. There are replicas made of it today, but this is actually made of bronze. It is pan. He's got a little bit of green on him because it's... The vertigo, yeah. But yes, this is the god pan. And in fact, he was actually mentioned in my first media ever. I was 19 years old. That's how long I've had this. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. But I was 19 years old and we were asked to do an interview in the Spokesman Review and they took all my comments and gave them to somebody else but they talked about my necklace. Well there you go. So even today he loves celebrity. He does. Yeah. Leave it to Brian. It's kind of like, like this the, is <coughs> No. Yeah. So what were we talking about? Oh, mystery. Nobody knows. The glory. The door. Um, all joking aside, I do actually, people think I'm being mean when I say that or I'm being coven. facetious about coven witchcraft, about how I want it to be closed off. It should be, actually. 
Let's talk about something else for a second. Uh, we live in New Orleans. I've got good friends who practice voodoo, right? Uh, voodoo is a, in, in New Orleans, the voodoo we mostly encounter is Haitian voodoo. Yep. Uh, I've got a great friend who is a Haitian priest. And we've, we sometimes have, you know, we've got great disagreements, but we've got lots of things in common. Yeah. And one of the things he talks about is the fact that, because he's relating to me, is he, that voodoo is a community religion. Yes. Not community in the way that online community is, not in the community in the way that, you know, the pagan community is, but community based on priests and priestesses, initiates coming together and working together. Mm -hmm. They do offer that tribal community to broader people, which we do as covens as well, some yeah. of us. You know, we do soirees, we have public uh, rituals, we do different things that we you know, try to mm -hmm. interact with people. Alexandrian witchcraft is not as secretive as Gardenaire witchcraft is. We Usually, actually, yeah. we believe that the mysteries guard themselves. So that's why we'll answer most questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and once again, this is a narrative that's coming apart from the elders. You know, this training, the things I'm saying. There are Gardenarians who have become a bit more Alexandrian. So, I don't, just like there's Alexandrians that have become a bit more Gardenarian. Yeah, we bleed, right? We yeah. bleed back and forth. They are distinct, though. Don't mix your drinks, make a choice. I think it's important, too, because I think... Mm. Otherwise, you end up kind of... They're separate philosophies. That's yeah. the, the difference between Gardner and Alexandrian. Talking about covens, like why you'd want to pick one of the other. Why you'd want to pick one of the other. They yeah. are separate philosophies. The practice is not that different. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, individual coven practices might have different things, but the practice is not that different. But the philosophies are. It's kind of like, oh, there's the Sith and the Jedi. They both use the Force. They both have lightsabers. They both have training. They both have masters. They both have all these things. They both are basically practicing this religion of the Force. But their philosophies are extremely different. Yeah. Like Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic, right? Uh, both very traditional, historic, Western Christian you religion. You hate my sci-fi. I don't. It's very good, though. It's People correct. It is very wrong. correct. Yeah. Now you just have to figure out who's the Sith and who's the Jedi. Oh, please. I find your lack of faith. Everybody knows which one we are. are. You kidding? Oh, black clothing, maybe. I don't know. It's not even. The but black. we wear white robes, so we do. Know who is who? We do. What if we're the? What if we're the Jedi? What a horrible thought. Don't. Ew. No. <laughs> I hate that. Like, I don't wanna, it's gross. <laughs> no, we're not the Jedi. It's like oh my god! It's like finding out you're Hufflepuff. Oh, it's be horrifying. I can't. Um, we'd have to give them. Uh, Hufflepuff and the uh, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Or more we would be Ravenclaw and Slytherin. That's not wrong, actually. I kind of agree nah, with that historically. Because you do have Alexandrians who are like power, 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 and you've got Alexandrians who are like. Lee, 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 lee. You know, honestly, those are the weak ones. Okay. We anyway, should do. We should do an episode one day just on pop Let's culture. Let's be everyone's friend. Like witchcraft right, and pop you culture. You do that for us, darling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> witchcraft and pop culture. Yeah. It'd be horrifying. No, um, not anyone in our coven. Wherever. Somebody. Okay, um, here's a question. Somebody said, "I love the delayed reaction." I know. Right? Somebody is asking on here. Uh, what do you think about talking about another? Uh, you might see covens of this tradition in your area. What do you think about the Minoan Brotherhood and Sisterhood? The Minoan Brotherhood and Sisterhood, in my opinion, are not witchcraft. And that's a very strong thing to say. Yes. But I'm sorry, it is. What these are, what these traditions are, and in fact. No, they're not strong in my area anymore because the, the patriarch of that's now in Chicago spreading his seed. And he was rejected by his own initiators. Uh, the Minoan Brotherhood, and I don't dislike the Minoan Brotherhood and the Minoan Sisterhood, but based on my training, they, are, they do not practice the magic or traditions we do. Basically, what they did is they took the tradition of witchcraft created by Gerald Gardner, mm -hmm. and they the Gardner, created yeah. homosexual traditions. Now, I am homosexual, so yeah. this isn't, I know, surprise. My God! So this is not a, shall not obviously, anti-homosexual thing, so nobody can attack man. me for that, Probably. but the reality of the situation is, um, I am actually 
friends with uh, you were the say I'm highest straight. ranking Minoan that exists. I'm not going to name him because I didn't get permission to do so. But I'm friends with the highest rank, the eldest Minoan that exists on Earth, still alive. And he said to me that when we started this tradition, it was necessary because a lot of Gardenarians would not initiate gays. It's no longer necessary. This tradition serves no purpose because they are all doing it now. In fact, most Gardenarian and Alexandrian high priests are gay. You know, um, uh, let me finish. Yes. Uh, I don't have anything wrong with it. I think that they're beautiful mystery cults that were created by Eddie Bazinski and people associated with him, Lady Rhea. Lady Rhea. I have no problem with them. I'm not saying these people weren't witches because most of the people that founded it were actually initiated from other traditions and they are witches. I consider the Minoan Brotherhood and the Minoan Sisterhood to be gay mystery cults. I do not consider them to be a part of initiatory witchcraft because essentially they broke the rule of the power was passed down the ages each time between woman and man. And the reason why as a gay person I find that to be important is because gay people don't have babies. And this is a fertility cult. So... We, we don't have them literally. <laughs> do I really have to explain? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking... If anyone's going to challenge us because I didn't explain we don't have them... Yes, we have children, some of us. The stupid ones. But oh yes, God. Uh, we do have children. The point of it is, is that, you know, takes a man and woman have a baby. Likewise, our magic kind of follows that path. It's a fertility cult. Like, hello? You don't have to do it. We're not, like Levi was saying earlier, we're not a universal religion. We're not trying to say humanity has to follow our model. Yeah. We're saying that this is what we do and why we do it. And as a gay man, personally, like, I have no problem with the fact that my creators on this plane, or the gate to my creation on this plane, was my mother and my father. That's what brought me here. That's fertility in human beings. Yeah. If my dad would have fucked some gorgeous guy, oh my God. I wouldn't be here. It's not fertility. That's much too vulgar display of power, Karen. Oh, I said, I said the yeah. <laughs> end. Sorry. Girl, take funny. it down. <laughs> so, I don't know if I've gone off course, but the point of it Just is... Just a bit. Is, uh, the Minoan Brotherhood and the Minoan Sisterhood, to me, are gay cults that are iconic, historical. I hope they actually did good things for people. Yeah. I'm not a member. I don't want to be a member. Um, I don't think they're necessary anymore. Uh I don't consider them a part of initiatory witchcraft. It breaks the chain. Uh, I think that I think that it's fine if that's what you want to do. You know, uh, I don't want to be in a gay cult. If I wanted to be in a gay cult, I well, who? Hello. <laughs> do you think they'd say no? Uh, I just no. it's not it's not so, look at this. No, no. I'm fine. just gonna. I'm just. Just no. over here. Whatever's going on over here. Not something I'm interested in doing. I practice witchcraft for a different reason. Whatever's happening. Now, I don't... It's not to disrespect the people that started it. Like that my friend said, at one time, they were being excluded. And uh, I don't think there's any reason to exclude gay people from... Actually, I don't think there's a reason to exclude anyone from initiatory witchcraft unless they cannot do the job of a priest or a priestess. Yeah. That's it. Otherwise, you're in. Yes. Otherwise, I don't, I don't see a reason. No. So, there is no. a job description. It's, priest or, it's a priesthood. You know, and if you are not approaching it, if you're going to have a political narrative about it and you're not taking it as seriously as you would having the same political narrative about a Catholic priest, it's because you're not taking it seriously and you're not respecting it to its fullest. I think I wouldn't add much to that about the whole Minoan Brotherhood sisterhood. I mean, Ed Bizinski was a very I've interesting. I've been very dominating. No, oh, you're fine. Uh, very Somebody asked Levi a question. Very interesting figure. 
Um, and so is Lady Rhea. The whole beginning of it's very interesting. And Eddie I Vizinski, love Lady Rhea. Yes, and Eddie Vizinski was a trained Gardnerian. Um, and he was beautiful. And he was, and his his biography called. And the Bull he was of an Heaven. initiate to the Welsh tradition. Yes, he was. They, he has a biography means. called uh, "The Bull of Heaven" that's really good if you're interested in him. But um, yes, but yeah. I will tell you, and I only know this because I know people. The Minoan Brotherhood does not like that book. No, they don't. But I uh, don't know why though. A lot of people who not. personally knew him do. So it's one of those things of like. Um, well, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Know. Image in the religion is a little. Different. I don't know what my friend thinks about it because I don't remember if he's mentioned. Yeah, I have to ask. But it's fascinating, a sort of figure. But and I'd mention you, friend, but I'm not mentioning you out of respect. No, no, we don't want to. We do not want to do that. So I think we are nearing the end of our time. Is what do you think? No, yeah, we've got plenty of time. What are the questions? We can go till nine. Mm-mm. Sort of. A... Okay. Mm-mm. Did you change it to eight thirty? I thought it went to nine. No. I thought we ended it. No, it can go till nine. Yeah. It doesn't but, have um, to. We can end it whenever we want to. But I want to make sure we get all the questions. Yeah, all the questions, questions on YouTube we hit. Week. And Facebook. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Ask me. Ask away. So, you're about to take your second or third. Private affair, I probably should not announce online. It's right? too late now, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, it's the story of my life. <laughs> isn't it? Too late now, Brian. It's too late now. Uh, you have been on this path of coven witchcraft. What kind of coven would you want to lead in the future? You just, they'll spring that on me at the end of a show on, in public. <laughs> like, what kind of coven would I want to run? Um, I, I'm hesitant to say because I think... Hopefully not out of fear. Not out of fear at all. <laughs> not out of fear. No, no, no. No, no, no. One better than yours, bitch. No. <laughs> no. Good luck. I, I will kill you and take all your power. <laughs> um, I will drain the lifeblood out of you like a, like a sap. No. Um, I'm hesitant to say for one Why reason. Why don't our coven members come on here and talk to me? I know, right? They uh, watch it. They watch it. They do. Um, uh, the reason I'm hesitant is not out of fear. It's because I think a lot of covens do happen in an organic fashion. And the gods send who they will and things like that. I think even with this one, it did happen yes. that way. Yeah, like the gods sort of form I got what a they bunch want. of very yeah. powerful so. people, and now everyone's afraid. <laughs> so so um, I think that that's. But I will say, I, I do think that my. We're, we're 11 strong right now. Not a bad number. No, it's not. I think my particular brand, I don't like that word, but uh, because of the training I've received and whatnot, it, is, it does tend to be rigorous, a little bit more. Um, a little bit more intense, I think, you know, like, than a lot of people. Like, I, I you know, a little bit less tolerant of, of sort of uh, people who you are know, You're very lucky to get someone as nice as I am. That is, wow, a lack of self-awareness that is, like, palpable. You're anyway. very lucky to get someone as dedicated as I was. But I, <laughs> if I'm mean, I learned it all from Val. Not true. <laughs> he was, maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe she was just born this way. <laughs> She's hateful by nature. Uh... We're, we're all disciplinarians. And training, we are. You know? uh, because we want people to be the best. You know? so, not yeah, no. So if what kind of coven would I run? I mean, one very similar to the training that I've received. I mean, I'm not going to veer from the path. I'm pretty orthodox. I'm, we jokingly call ourselves Shiites. You know, we're Shiite witches. Um, you know, we're pretty, uh, pretty rigid. But um, I would expect a lot out of people because a lot was expected of me. And it molded me into what I am. And I learned a lot and I grew. And... If your life's not literally changing, like when I look back to who I was before I was initiated and now, it's an insane difference, people. Like, and my life has changed. Yes, like you, you did my not. Life. Nobody knew. Not a lot of people knew who this was before I was initiated. I'm not talking about things at hex or reading or whatever. I'm just talking about my own personal life. You know, my whole life changed. Okay, he's got a boyfriend now. Why is that the center because of everything? Because nobody wanted to date him before he was witch. You hateful creature. <laughs> like, you don't even exist to me. I don't even know you right now, you hateful me. Well, on my desk. Here's the thing. I will say this. I didn't use witchcraft for it's that. It's very part. mean. Best thing about joining the coven. It just makes you sexier. There's something about the fertility that just flows around all of us. Oh we just become God. more gorgeous and sexier. It's really a fertility religion. It's got to have its benefits. <laughs> we all made a deal. <laughs> you made a deal. I saw I saw Satan in a can of Pringles. I wish we could have <laughs> offered online questions. Uh, if I was going to leave anyone with anything tonight, it would be that I believe that the center... Try to look at the camera. The center, the 
Tootsie Roll. The center of the universe in witchcraft is the coven. I believe every coven is autonomous, whether within a tradition or not. Yes, within a tradition, there might be more check and balances because you've got peers. But the center hub of it is that witchcraft of itself cannot truly be solitary because that is of yourself. Levi said something a few weeks ago on the subject of initiation. You cannot fall in love with yourself. We're talking about a fertility cult and a fertility religion. Yep. You have to have this inner exchange. I do not believe you can reach the pinnacle of what the craft means just because you're having your own fantasy. No, I don't. And if you are having your own fantasy and it's powerful and you're actually helping people with it, fine. I'm not here to judge you, nor is Levi. Well, he probably I'm here is. to judge you. He actually judges lots of people. I'm here to judge you. But the point of it is, is I actually do believe that the central hub to witchcraft is this community, small select members of 13. Why 13? This is a lunar cult. The old year, the old calendar was measured by moons. There are 13 moons in the old month. So the coven members represented a station of that cycle of the year, that cycle of the universe, true fertility circle. There are historical references to this. Can't go into all yeah. of it now, but there are. Uh, that's what we represent. And it, there are many examples of it. From Robin Hood and his 12 merry men to Jesus and his 12 apostles. There are many, many examples of this. Yeah. To Arthur and the, the Knights mm-hmm. of the Round Table over and over again. Uh, it is a thing. You know, this is the old count, the zodiac and the mysterious 13th zodiac. You know, uh, it is true that originally our year had 13 moons, and sometimes it still does. You know, time, you know, our, our way of recording changed. Originally, it was by the moon. And the moon predominantly was seen as a goddess. Sometimes a god, yep. but predominantly a goddess. And this is the way we work. We are a lunar cult. We are a, lo- we are a lunar convent. And we come together to exchange knowledge, training, and power. And I think that's the heart of witchcraft. The witchcraft that's going to make a difference in the world. Your solitary witchcraft is only going to make a difference in the world if you're Jesus of Nazareth. And you're so powerful and magnificent that you're just, everyone's going to come and talk to you. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's the truth. If you're solitary, that's perfectly fine. Just don't get offended by those of us that want to work in humanity. And I think if you want to work in humanity, you need to be in a coven. Yeah, you can't, I mean, what are you going to, it's just one of those things that I always go back to this. I'm very tired of hearing things like, you can't pour from an empty chalice, and if you want to heal the world, heal yourself first. I agree with that in psychological therapeutic terms. I'm goddamn but, gorgeous. Yeah, wow. Okay. So, Deborah's over here just having a moment. But, um, all joking aside, in the, in the Western world right now, if you think that the problem with the Western world is that we don't love ourselves, and we're not self-centered, what world are you living in? Like, you, Levi, you, mean, you didn't love yourself when you were fat. And it's been a great night, guys. But he got <laughs> initiated and he got skinny. God bless all of you. Look at him. And he's got a cute boyfriend. Patrick. The cute Patrick. We have to right. go now. Um, you know. I don't even know the button to hit. Hold on. Let me do no. it. Uh, he's looking for a button. All in the time. Hang on. Not that one. Right, one more question. Time. Got 15 minutes. Levi, what would be your rec- recommendation from your journey? How would you advise people? Because let's call a spade a spade. Mm-hmm. You're extremely intelligent. You speak seven languages. You're highly educated. You picked me as the one to guide you. I did. I, I did. know what's wrong with you. I but did. anyway, what would you recommend to someone on the same path? Do you want me to be brutally honest? Absolutely. Good. Um, 
I actually get I asked. Peril, but yes. I get this. I get asked this a lot. For those of you who don't know, my background is pretty academic, very He's bookish. Extremely intelligent. Well, I mean, on that's some uh, level. Yeah, uh, I'm very bookish, <laughs> right? That's, I'll give myself that. Right, I'm a He's teacher. He's fucking and, smart. There you go. Oh, I should just said that. So vulgar. Yeah. Um, people Sorry. ask me all the time, "Why are you in BTW, or why are you in Alexandria, why are you in this coven? Like, why aren't you in the OTO, or why aren't you in some weird, like, esoteric order or Rosicrucians?" Because he likes power. He's not actually wrong, people. Um, buy your that's f- about individuals. Buy Go your, ahead. Sorry. But no, Take Brian's me. right. Yeah. Buy their fruits, you shall know them. Like, do I sometimes look at this and I'm like, my God, the, the craziness and the overtopness of all this. Everybody has those moments. But the fact is, is if you want to be in the occult and you want power and you want magic and you want glory and enlightenment and you think it's going to be a bunch of boring people sitting around doing nothing all the time, no. Like, it just isn't going to happen that way. Study any of the great mystics. My high any priestess is basically a black widow. I trained her from the ground up, but she could eat my head off at any time. Yeah, and we could all die tomorrow. It's fine. It happen. <laughs> but no. So advice. Brian's question. To advice. Why did I pick him? Why did I pick this coven? What do I tell you? Find the juice, people. Like, find a spark. Find the place where you feel challenged and you know that some... Basically, to be a oh, little vulgar... Eating the head off is a pragmatist. Yeah, I was, was, was going to let well, you Oh, whatever. Have she both those things. Have Find the place where there's a spark, where there's something that tests you a little. Where, I mean, jump into the fire, people. Like, if it's a bunch of boring people sitting around talking about their feelings and crying a lot. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. Like, Witchcraft, to quote Austin Chapele, Chapele. should be powerful. It should be. It should be powerful. It should uh, be fun. It's not, well, not necessarily fun. Fun in a powerful way. I don't mean We fun have our fun moments, but I, I do not maybe. believe witchcraft. I'm going to rep- reprimand you on that. He's going to reprimand I don't you. know witchcraft should always be fun. It's not a fun activity. Uh, sometimes it's not fun at all. Sometimes people tell you you're fat and worthless. <laughs> you, you never know, did. Uh, you know, it's not always fun. Uh, but. <laughs> I trust you all! <laughs> Unclean spirit! Tell them you're out! We're done here. <laughs> the point is, is that this is, if you're choosing, if you, what are you trying to do with your witchcraft? You know, what what are you trying to yeah. do? You believe in magic, you believe in God, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's all granted. We're not saying you all have to be on our level. And in no. fact, I think that or in, a, in, kind of in a sense, I think that I make a mistake by projecting a sort of intimidation for people. I think what our covenant right. intimidates a lot of people. Uh, don't be. If you're actually sincere and you want to worship the gods of witchcraft, work on your inner planes and your psychic powers and work magic, do not be intimidated by us because we all did the same thing. None of us were initiates, and I think almost all of us practiced magic before we were initiates. So we're not here to try to... We're just here to say that this is important, it matters. You know, to the people it matters to. And I think it matters to humanity. I don't think that... I think from the days of Eleusis and the, you know, our history of humankind, I think initiation matters. I do too. And it's powerful. I don't think it's just a thing to get into a club. I don't think it's just your club card at the no, airport. No, it's not just for... I think it's powerful, and I'm sorry, I do think it's more powerful than the other way. But that doesn't mean it's your way. There are some people who will follow the gods and follow the way of being a warrior or being something else. A warrior, a poet, a king. Whatever it is. A thousand ways. You know, uh, nothing wrong. It's it's not about criticizing. But if you think that your full-on life vocation is to be a witch or a priest or a priestess, initiation is the only way. It's not solitary. It's not make it up on your own, blah, 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 blah. If you've joined a group that's made it up on their own, and that's not what you want, move on. You're not bound to it. You know, if you like it, stay with it. Yeah. Just be honest about it. You know, who knows? There may be traditions in the future that matter. But to this day, I believe, and you can correct me if you feel otherwise, out of all the traditions that have gone on, and all the books... Scottish witchcraft, Irish witchcraft, this and blah, 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 blah. Mostly, it's got generic and Alexandria witchcraft that's stuck. Yeah, it has. It's Nothing else really has. There's uh, a couple there are of exceptions. Like, not a lot. Uh, I'd say in America, uh, the Cabot tradition has stuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's a very unique thing. Yeah, and know? the fairy tradition. Uh, mm. 
No, not that one. The, not the radicals. Well, the, I don't know. The I Anderson know. ones. Yeah. But there are things, you know, that do. Uh, if they'll continue or not, only time will tell. Yeah. And we, I mean... And they'll know. only continue if there's real power there. I do... Here's what Does I Does it matter about people. opinions? Power. You, you. Kind of like the people who ask me, why did you end up in this one instead of something more bookish or whatever? Well, here's an example. Like, I love Chumbly's Azaletia. It's a gorgeous book. Unbelievable poetry. It sits on a lot of bookshelves, and it's a beautiful leather-lined book that nobody really uses. And before anybody sends me the messages about how um, the cult of Sabati and all that, before anybody sends me messages about how there's these secret groups that worship the cult of Sabati, Jesus there's just not. Christ. There's just not. Like we so, are the secret groups, darling. It's like, it's like I mean, they're pretty. If you want to join me on Illuminati? It's us. It's like they're Sorry. pretty, but they're not. They're not being used. They're just not. So like, what stuck? Dorian stuck, and Gerald stuck, and Alex and Maxine stuck. That's what stuck. So. It just did. So those other things, they maybe have beautiful poetry and amazing sort of liturgies and whatnot, and they sit in books and they don't really do anything. And, um, you know, that's not what I'm here for. I want it to function in the real world. So if you're looking for something that you want to participate in religiously, it should. It should work. Exactly. Power. <laughs> what are you going to do? Anyway, good night, everyone. Next week we're going to do... Uh, the mythology the of witchcraft. witchcraft. So yes. we're going to talk a bit about those things that we believe and we don't believe about the witch witchcraft, cult. the witch cult, and no. what we're doing. Medieval witchcraft. How it evolved into the cult of Diana. what some people call traditional witchcraft and what we as initiates do cult. as well. Yep. And what doesn't serve us anymore and what might be of interest in the future. So and what yeah. to bring back, maybe. So the mythology of witchcraft is going to be our next subject. Uh, Good night, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Glad to be back. It has been fabulous. We'll see you next weekend. There were covens in Europe. That's what they're called. The the, the congregation. Covens in Europe, in America, and in Australia. And they have one right here. That whole bunch. The parties with the singing and the food and the chanting. Those are espas or sabbaths. I don't get excited. Read what they do, Guy. They use blood in their rituals. And the blood that has the most power is baby's blood.